How there, everybody? Welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today, we are going to be analyzing Starbucks, a company that doesn't need a single introduction. We all know what this company does. They sell coffee, they sell pastries, and gotta say, really, really good coffee too. Is it worth $8? Uh, for me, not necessarily, but that's not really the point. We're going to be analyzing the fundamentals of this company and see if today's share price is actually justifiable depending on their fundamentals. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Starting off, we got the dividend summary. This company actually does pay a dividend, guys, and not a small one either. Dividend yield of 2.06%, which ends up being 49 cents a share for an annual payout of $1.96. Payout ratio in regards to the net income is a little bit high, guys, at 56.2%. 12%. It's still under my 60% threshold. However, I want to see what this payout ratio is in regards to the free cash flow, not the net income. We're going to see that in just one second. The five-year growth rate on this dividend is a whopping 16.7%. They have grown their dividends for 11 consecutive years. Ex-dividend date actually is, it hasn't even come across yet you still have one more day as of posting this video which is february 10th payout date is also february 25th and they pay out their dividends quarterly now coming over here to the calculator we got the ticker symbol sbux market cap of 109.2 billion dollars pe guys of 25.6 i want a pe that's under 20 this to me is telling me that this is a teensy bit high by around five points so it's i would like for this to come down according to this metric right we're going to see other metrics and then we're going to make an assumptions based on the share buybacks and the growth that they might have into the future and then we're going to come up with a target share price that we should pay for this company based on our assumptions current share price guys is 94 dollars 92 cents this is actually really really important because well starbucks is actually really really close to their 52 week low as you can see here by this graph on the one year they are down 10.6 percent and over here their 52 week low was around 93 dollars and 79 cents their highest was 126 dollars and 32 cents so we are essentially like at the 52 week low which tells me that well we might be willing to buy this company if our assumptions make sense and their fundamentals actually look pretty decent but nonetheless as we saw they do pay an annual dividend of a dollar 96 cents which ends up being about 2.3 billion dollars being paid out in dividends every single year and after this dividend is paid they're still left with around 1.9 billion dollars left in their free cash flow which the payout ratio in regards to the free cash flow it's is about 55%, which is very, very, very close to the payout ratio in regards to the net income as well. It's getting a little bit closer to the 60% threshold. However, it is still below the 60%. Therefore, for my metrics, they are 100% able to afford this dividend. Now coming over here to the fundamentals, we got the net income five years ago of $2.9 billion to one year ago of $4.2 billion, which is a massive increase, which is an increase of 46%. Now, obviously guys, the elephant in the room here is two years ago, they barely made any money at $928 million. The way that I see this is, this to me is not really an issue because they are a coffee company. In order for you to buy coffee, you have to go to them, right? You, you physically have to go to them. And well, we're in 2022, subtract two years, we get 2020 and pretty much the whole pandemic where everything was shut down. So this small amount of net income was probably through like drive throughs and that kind of stuff. Maybe some states that didn't shut down, which explains why this number is so low. So in my personal opinion, this trend line is going slightly down, however, the way that I see it is they might have well just be a flat net income within the past five years. Next, we got the free cash flow five years ago of $2.7 billion to one year ago of $4.5 billion, which is an increase of 65% with an average five-year free cash flow of $4 billion. Now, obviously, again, the elephant in the room was two years ago where they only made $114 million in free cash flow. And again, same exact thing. COVID happened, pandemic, nobody was allowed to go outside, people were locked down, companies, coffee companies, nobody was going to them unless they were going to like a drive through or something. So this is a very, very expectable to see the two years ago that they only made $114 million. Now, the issue that I have with this free cash flow is the fact that three years ago, they didn't do so hot either. I mean, from four years ago, 
of almost 10 billion to then three years ago of 3.2 billion that's kind of sus in my opinion but i don't necessarily know what happened in this current situation what we know is that the trend line is going down and me personally i would see it as slightly going up because of the four year ago mark but this 144 million dollars to me isn't really that much of an issue because again the whole pandemic happened next we got the revenue five years ago of 22.4 billion to one year ago of 29 billion which is an increase of around 30 percent and once again we see the, the exact same thing two years ago slightly lower revenue again pandemic not really much of an issue next we got the total assets minus the total liabilities and what this metric says is if they were to liquidate all of their assets, would they be able to pay off all their liabilities? You want this number to be positive. And unfortunately, here with Starbucks currently, they are actually very red when it comes to their total assets minus total liabilities. This pretty much means that they have significantly more liabilities than assets. And currently, well, they're in the red by 1.2 seven billion dollars which is really really bad to see and not just that guys they have been cutting this total assets minus total liabilities margin pretty pretty close throughout the past several years actually the one year which this wasn't an issue was four years ago where they had an extra 6.8 billion dollars aside from that five years ago it was one billion three years ago it was negative 514 million so they were underwater three years ago two years ago they were barely up at 459 million one year ago of 1.6 billion and then obviously we know this year they are down by 1.7 billion so really really concerning i do not like this in the slightest the total average assets however is about eight billion dollars the total average liabilities is about 6.7 billion dollars and then subtracting the total average assets minus the total average liabilities we get around 1.3 billion dollars next we got the shares outstanding a metric that people tend to overlook people don't understand and it really is terrible that people don't don't know this because this tells you whether or not the company is diluting you as the investor you want this number to be going down i always make the analogy of a slice of pizza the more people you have to split that slice of pizza evenly the smaller your piece of pizza will get so you want this number to be going down not up five years ago to 1.4 billion shares to today of 1.2 billion shares which is a decrease guys around 19 and a half percent which is huge and then previous year to the current year they have decreased it of around 2.4 percent which is really really good to see and lastly we've got the cash and equivalents and as of today they have essentially four billion dollars in cash and equivalents with an average cash and equivalents around 4.8 billion dollars now knowing all this let's make a low median and high assumption changing the growth and the share buybacks while keeping the recurring rate of return the same at around 10 percent to match the s p 500 in doing so for the low assumption i'm going to say a growth around five percent and a projected share buyback of around two percent let's keep it that they're going to keep buying back at the same rate that they did from the previous year to this year around two percent this comes out to be a target share price not adjusting for debt of 53 dollars and three cents for the median assumption i'm going to assume a growth rate of eight percent with a projected share buyback of three percent this comes out to be a target share price of sixty dollars and 58 cents and for the high assumption i'm going to assume a growth of ten percent with a projected share buyback of four percent this comes out to be a target share price of sixty six dollars and 83 cents now we need to adjust for debt and unfortunately they do have currently they do have way more debt than they do cash so this number is going to come down and for the low assumption this number comes all the way down to $34.86 for the immediate assumption it is $41.85 and for the high assumption we get $47.50 now let's actually add a margin of safety just in case if markets really fall you want to have a cushion for paying for company because the more you pay for something today the less returns you're going to have in the future therefore with a margin of safety of 5 10 and 15 percent for the low assumption, we would like to buy between $29 all the way up to $33. For the media assumption, we would like to buy between $35 and $39. And for the high assumption, between $40 and $45. Guys, the current share price is $94.92. And as we saw earlier in the video, this is really, really close to the 52-week low. So, again, this is essentially 
now what you have to make assumptions on your own because again these are just my assumptions do you believe that starbucks will remain around in the future i personally think so i personally think that 10 years from now starbucks would 100 percent be there i don't see them going away my issue though is that Currently, in the United States and even just the world, we are going through shortages. We are going through a massive, massive inflation period. And, well, Starbucks is part of the consumer discretionary sector. Meaning that if people start to get a little bit tight on money, they are probably not going to buy Starbucks if, if it means to save a couple dollars. Especially since Starbucks, they make coffee. Well, you can just make coffee at home for like an eighth of the price, right? So it is what it is, and that's essentially why my growth assumptions currently are are that low. And this is exactly why I just believe that me buying them at around $60, $50 to me is the correct price. Now, if you do not agree with my assumptions, then I suggest you get this calculator and you make your own assumptions. You can find it in my discounted free cash flow calculator video. All I'm asking for is like, subscribe, and comment. It really does help. We are up to 334 subscribers, which is awesome. I really appreciate all of you guys. I really appreciate all of you guys who comment, like, love it all. Amazing. Thank you very much. But again, my assumptions you should make your own assumptions. All in all, guys, when it comes to Starbucks, I do like the fact that they do pay a dividend. However, their moat isn't necessarily that great to me. Their moat is essentially just making coffee and pastries. I personally just make my own coffee at home, and I don't see why other people can't do the same. Or even then, who's to say that other startup coffee companies might not even just like compete against starbucks right at least for me it really does depend on their moat and right now it's not really that strong for me to be even willing to put money into this company but that pretty much does it for this episode like if you like comment subscribe it really does help with the algorithm on youtube you can also follow me on my new tech sites obitu odyssey and rumble where in addition to my stock analysis videos and crypto videos you'll find exclusives as well and in regards to Rumble and YouTube, I have a Let's Play channel where I'm currently playing through Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if you want to follow me there, you so can. Also, link in the description. So with that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis video.